Yo, 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 it's the homie Mac, <coughs> music, art, culture, knowledge, each one teach one, peace and love, reporting live from the Dogon, um, thumbs up, give me the likes, thumbs up, give me the likes, uh, shout out to YK1K, Young Kings, uh, YK1K, I'll put a link to, uh, this is actually where I got the t-shirt from, my Huey P. Newton t-shirt, YK1K. I'm going to put a link to uh, my frat brother's web website. Shout out to the homie Bam. I'll put a link to his website, his in his personal Instagram, in his business Instagram. So y'all can um, show him some love and uh, buy some product. Um, but yeah, thumbs up, give me the likes, thumbs up, give me the likes. Um, this is a session of Mac Minutes. Um, can't say it enough. Each one teach one. Each one teach one. Um, damn, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the Killmonger energy tonight. Got the Killmonger mask. This is the, this episode is in the spirit of Killmonger. Killmonger, Killmonger. But, uh, real quick, let's get to it. This is a Mac Minutes. Um, this Mac Minutes will be entitled, Atheism on a Sunday. Atheism on a, Atheism on a Sunday. I am, let's see... I am reporting live from the Dogon again on the, on Sunday, November 14th, 2021. Okay. Uh, oh, come on, don't fall over. Yeah, atheism on Sunday. What are you talking about, Mac? Um, let's get to it. Um, I was raised Christian, specifically Church of God in Christ. Um, I... Again, raised Christian, grew up in a Christian household. Um, I had a Judeo-Christian-centered uh, culture that I came up in. Um, my dad actually did not grow up in the church, um, but my mother was uh, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, there, were, there actually were a lot of atheists on my father's side. But my, my father being from Detroit, my mother being from Mississippi, my mother was born and born and evolved or grew up grew up um, in the Bible Belt. Um, my dad did not accept Christ and become a Christian. My dad did not accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. I want to say until he went to college, like his senior year later on. Um, but yeah, let me. Look, but where am I going with all this? I want. I guess I want to give a context. And center, center y'all, <laughs> center everyone, and know my upbringing and uh, context of the upbringing of my parents, me being their progeny. So the context that I was socialized in. Um, I was raised in the church, Church of God in Christ. Um, I've heard my mother speak in tongues. I've spoken in tongues. I've had a pastor touch me in my forehead and I fell out. <laughs> Different things. Um, but when I got to college and I learned about, I guess, the political side of Christianity, I learned about, uh, how Christianity, um, and religion, not even just Christianity, just because you can talk about Islam, um, the Abra all Abrahamic faiths <laughs> across the board. Um, it was a political game. It was a, a political ploy for ploy for power. Um, when I learned about the political dynamics, um, how Constantine himself—I don't even think he was a Christian, Emperor Constantine. Um, when I learned about Islam, all the Abrahamic faiths across the board, everything became. I, I felt. I felt like. I became somewhat disillusioned because I realized religion was more or less about power. Even if you break down the, the, the word, if you go to the etymology of the word religion and you break it down, I think I believe it means to like to bind or control. Check me, fact check me. But yeah, to bind or control. So um, the more I looked at religion, I looked at the Anglican church, Catholicism. How uh, even if you go to, uh, you can't see it on the map that I'm pointing at, but the Middle East... The Middle East is pretty much the hub for the Abrahamic faith. 
even though the Middle East is, I guess, a man a man made concept concept because the Middle East is really nothing but Northeast Africa. It, it, but anyway, that's a whole other con conversation. Um, I realized that a lot of this was about control, uh, socially, politically, and about money, trade. Um, again, I think it's called the Great Rift, Great Rift Valley. I don't know. I don't want to say the Great Rift Valley. Um, the Middle East. That was a major trade port. Um, I, I want to. I would even argue from the things I researched, Christianity itself was. Um, the, it, it came from Turkey, or, or at least the, the 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 church itself as a as a political fomentation. It came in Turk. It came. It, it its genesis was in Turkey. Now, mind you, major trade port. You had Asians, Africans, Europeans, everybody crossing through this this section. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure the, the the phenotypically there's a lot going on. Um, when I read the Bible, when I read the Bible, the, the depiction of Jesus is not what I saw in Hollywood. <laughs> You know, blonde hair, blue eyes, Tom Cruise, Jesus. I don't see that in the Bible. I see myself. Um, but anyway, when I became um, in college, when I started to learn about how religion was politicized, when I started to learn that um, I came across a book called The the Crucified Messiahs. It may have been 13 or 16 Crucified Messiahs. I can't remember. But basically, I learned that I learned about Krishna. I learned about Dionysus. Um, I learned about uh, Osiris. Um, there's always a, a virgin-born messianic figure that saves the world. Um, so honestly, I felt like religion was nothing but a, a oh, and don't don't even get me talk about wait, hold up, Zoroastrianism. Learning about how the first monotheist, the first noted monotheistic religion is actually Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism actually came from uh, the Middle East. <laughs> you know, that, that trade port, again. Um, but yeah, I, I guess realizing that religion itself, I, at, in college, I realized religion is nothing more than a political game, as I stated earlier, as I uh, intimated earlier. <laughs> um, uh, then I learned that Religion is nothing more than an amalgam. I felt like religion became nothing more than a, than an amalgamation of myths. You know, the story of Haru, Krishna, uh, Dionysus, Mithra. Like the the narrative is is the same, but the name is different. And so I felt like religion was nothing more than um, a game of Chinese telephone. Let me add one better. Let me, one, let me, <laughs> here's the gag. Hi, Jazz. Um, I'm a scientist. So when I looked, when I started to learn more about science, I re I, I felt as though, you know, it's nothing but the, but the it, religion is nothing more than a game of Chinese telephone and politics it's about money, and God is nothing more than a hustle. I'll say it again. God is nothing more than a hustle. When I, when I learned about the selling of indulgences from the Catholic Church, when I learned about the Catholic Church's role in slavery, when I learned about uh, essentially how Europe, Europe, Europeans used religion as a hustle um, from imperialism and colonialism, if I can... If I can uh, make you forsake yourself spiritually and make you feel like my my representation, white you know white Jesus, is the is divine and the essence of divinity, you're gonna look towards me, even though Africa has been culturally spiritually rich, rich as, as Dr. John Herbert Clark said, Africa has Africa has always been culturally and spiritually rich, but us as descendants of Africans. As melanated colored, you know, as melanated, I don't colored, no, as melanated people throughout the globe, we have been taught that whiteness is divine. Anything that <laughs> has a speck of mel has uh, uh, an over over preponderance over, I almost said preponderance, but that is that is 
Senator Melanin, it's it or dark or black, it's evil. And that plays into colorism and everything else. Um but let me get back on track. I'm basically saying I saw the dark side of religion. I saw uh the different dynamics that came into play with religion on a political scale, on a social scale, and how really um you know from uh what was it called? Selling of indulgences, and uh, I, the name, the title, it escapes me right now. But this how 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 people have used religion to conquer and fight and control other people. I, I as I got when I was in college, I wanted nothing to do with it, and I thought I, I thought about the plight of black people. Um, and me, and it made me feel as though, you know, if we're the, you know. All the stuff that black people have been through, from the transatlantic slave trade uh, to colonialism and imperialism, why did God not intervene? You know, and even learning more about Jesus and feeling like Jesus was nothing more than amalgam, I, I feeling like Jesus was nothing more than an amalgamation of different uh, cultural, cultural, cultural. Learning that Jesus was really nothing more. Feeling well, I'm gonna say learning. Feeling like. Jesus was ultimately nothing more than an amalgamation of different cultural narratives from region to region. Chinese telephone, like I said. Uh, what do they call it? Acculturation, where different cultures interact and they create something new. Or they adopt other myths and culture. They, they adopt different things from other cultures and cultures adopt things from them. And then learning that they... Oh, oh, what was the book? Uh, Christianity Before Christ. Uh, <clears throat> came across that, and I felt as though uh, Jesus essentially was nothing more than a game of Chinese telephone, and how maybe he didn't ever even actually exist. And if, even if he did exist, uh, and I'm actually reading a book right now by uh, B uh, Bart Ethram. I can't remember. I think I might have messed up his last name, but his first name is Bart. Uh, did uh, Did Jesus actually exist? an uh, argument for the existence of Jesus of Nazareth. I think I might have butchered the title. But no, it, it made me feel as though maybe Jesus was just like this really cool dude. And when you talk to people, you realize sometimes we hear certain things and we don't hear certain things. We're on the flaw. And we add more things and make it bigger, bigger or smaller than what it really is. So maybe Jesus was just like this hyper distortion of different myths, and he didn't actually walk the earth. Um, so when I was in college, this is everything I told you is what I felt in college, mind you. So I got to a point where I was like, you know what? It's all a game. It's all about politics. It's all about money. Um, I don't believe in God. From from the transatlantic slave trade um, to the fact that you know black people have been trying, we have been the most religious. We love the Lord, and we're still getting screwed. It made it easier. I could, for all the, the nonsense that we've been going through, all the the the, the, the terrorism that we've endured, um, from from on U.S. soil, not even just U.S. soil, but globally, we've been hated. It made me feel as though you know what, God has to love us more than this. So if He's letting all this happen to us, then maybe God doesn't exist. No, not maybe. God doesn't exist. So I became an atheist, uh, moved in that community, um, and I, I just wanted answers. Like somebody got to tell me why the most the, the most loving, caring, spiritual, loving religious people um, are usually getting screwed. And people who don't even believe in God or necessarily acknowledge God, they have all the resources and they just do what they want to do. So my coping mechanism was just okay. Well, you know, it just it ain't no God. <laughs> you know, uh, and I remember having a conversation with my mother and telling her, you know, like, I don't, I'm not a Christian. I don't. And she just told me, you know, you know, Maurice, I love you. Mac, I love you. But all I'm saying is pray and ask God to show you, show himself to you. And my eyes got kind of big, like, whoa. You know, she was just like, I've done all I can. I, I taught you. You were raised in the church. I showed you the word. You, we, we, we read the scriptures, everything. And she was just like, you know, you, you're in school and you know a bunch of stuff I don't know about, but I know God. And I know God is real. 
And as I got older, I went back into the church because I realized a lot of things that were going on, it was just the doings of man. It was the mishaps. It was the egregious nature of man. It wasn't like God was like, you know, screw people over. And like, like just, I guess what I'm saying is, as re remove God from the equation, it still was people doing things to other people. And you can say, well, you know, people did these things in the name of God. But, yeah, I, I mean, but I guess ultimately what I'm saying is I wasn't really blaming God as much as I was blaming people. And I think people, you know, there's a book, I think it's called uh, Christianity, The Greatest Story Ever Sold, or something like that. And I guess what I'm saying is it's not so much about God. The, 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 it's not so much about... What am I saying? I'm saying ultimately free will. Free will is a mofo and people have used revelations from God or maybe distorted the things that they feel like they heard from God either consciously or subconsciously. I don't know. To get the things they wanted. And I realize, you know, there are things that I've experienced and felt that defy science, that defy logic. I can't explain it. I know people say the brain is a galaxy in itself and it can create its own reality. But my mother told me, you know, at some point science is, and technology is going to make us closer to the spiritual realm. And I believe that. Shout out to Dorothy. Um, looking at the metaverse, looking at different things that are going on with technology, um, I think there's, there's literally, the, the main argument is science and reality and objectivity. But I really think we're, we're, we're encroaching upon a time where there may not be much of a delineation between reality and what's orchestrated, reality or fiction. Like, there's, I, I just think, um, let me use my words carefully. I, I mean, essentially, 